Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson, we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking logo particle reveal effect using Adobe After Effects and Particular. So anyways, guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to create a logo. So I'm just going into Illustrator and I've just opened up a new document. The first thing that we need to do is we need to grab the line tool. I'm just gonna draw a straight line down. Then go to the selection tool and hold option on your Mac and then just drag a line out, something like that. So now we need to duplicate that. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm pressing Command D to duplicate. Once I have all of that, what I can do is I can rotate that. I'm just gonna hold Shift so it snaps in place. I'm gonna copy that. So press Command C to copy, and then just go to Edit, uh, Paste in place. And then I'm gonna go to the transform options and change the angle to 60 degrees. So now we have those angles going off on that 60 degrees. Now we have to reflect that. So what I need to do is I need to go back up to object, transform, reflect, and make sure you're on vertical and then just press copy. So now you have all of the stuff required to actually create the logo. So now what we're gonna do is make sure that you highlight everything and then we can come over here to the Shape Builder tool. Make sure that you put your black fill on first and now you can start to build your logo. So now once you've finished your logo, what you can do is you can just select the two pieces of the logo that you have and just drag them out. Now the only other thing that I did here is I rotated it that way. So, because I like the logo like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it to Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop and I've just downloaded one of these uh, free logo mock-up templates from Freepik. I will leave the link in the description. All you have to do to edit this is just double click on this design, um, add a new layer down here. And then what you wanna do is you just wanna copy it in and then just paste it as a smart object. And then what you can do is you can just make it a little bit bigger or whatever. And then once you press okay and you close that and save that, you'll see what happens to that original um, design over here. So now before we take this into After Effects, we need to change up a few things. So we wanna get rid of the background. We also wanna get rid of um, any text or anything like that. And we wanna also change some of the colors and stuff like that in here. So for example, if you want to uh, get rid of the shadow as well, uh, you can do that. And then inside of effects, you can actually get rid of uh, those things there. Or if you wanna change the colors as well. I was using Color Hunt and this was the color scheme that I was going to use. So I can just get colors out of there. And then if I go into the FX options, I can change the colors to whatever I like. So now I've got that blue uh, tinge in there and you can just go through the effects um, and you can have a look at some of the things that they have in there. And also you can actually change the colors completely as well so if you wanted to go and do that so for example if i was using this uh, light color in here i can just double click on that color window and now i have a color scheme which is ready to go for after effects there are some other examples here if you want a more metallic and chrome look i will also leave uh, this link in the description as well and you can pick and choose which one you want to do the only other thing that you have to do here is you have to export this as a PNG file. And so make sure that you set it to PNG and you have transparency on the background. So once you're happy with that, then you can take it into After Effects. So here we are in After Effects. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a new composition and I'm just gonna call this particle animation. And I'm just running with a 1920 by 1080 pixel document, 30 FPS, a duration of about 10 to 15 seconds just press OK. Once I have that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to import our logo. So I'm just gonna right click in here, go import file and then put our logo in there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag it to my timeline and I'm just gonna scale it down just so it fits in my composition just like that. Also while I'm here, I am going to rotate this because I didn't rotate this in Adobe Illustrator, but wherever you did that, I just have mine now rotated. 
The next thing that we need to do is we need to pre-compose this. So I'm just gonna go up to layer, pre-compose, and I'm just gonna call it image. I'm gonna make sure that I move all attributes uh, to it. And then once we've done that, we need to pre-compose that again. So I'm just gonna go to layer, pre-compose, and this time I'm gonna call it emitter. And I'm also going to move all the attributes into the new composition. So once I have that, I need to make that into a 3D layer. So I just need to come down here to the toggle switches, turn it into a 3D layer. I can take the eye off. And then what I need to do is I need to create a new solid, make sure that it's black. And I'm just gonna call this particles. So now that we've created our particle layer, the next thing that we need to do is we need to search for the effect called Particular. Now just a reminder that Particular is a paid plugin from Red Giant. So if you do not have it, please click in the link in the description to download your free trial. Once you have Particular, the next thing that you will need to do is you will need to open up the emitter settings and we're gonna change a few things here. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change the emitter type to a layer. We're gonna change the particles per second to let's say 100,000. So we're just gonna add three zeros to that. We are also going to change the emitter size. We're gonna put that down to zero. We're gonna change the velocity to zero, the velocity random also to zero, the velocity distribution to zero, and the velocity from the emitter to zero. So once you've done all that, then you'll need to open up the layer emitter and you'll need to change the layer to the emitter. And so now if you've done that correctly, now you will see you've got all these like little dots that are, you know, appearing on the actual logo. And that's looking pretty good. So now we're gonna change it up even more. So we're gonna open up the particle settings and what we're gonna do is we are going to change a few things. First, we're gonna change the sphere feather to zero. We're gonna bring down the size to about three. Um, we are also going to go to the size over life and we're just gonna go to the presets and I just want a, maybe an offset slope preset. So just press okay. And then what we are going to do is we are going to go to the opacity. So we're just gonna bump up the opacity random to let's say 100% and we're also going to change the opacity over life to that same preset that we had over here. So the offset slope. Once we have all of that, then the final thing in here is we'll need to change the blend mode to screen. And so now if you've done that correctly, now again, you will see some kind of, you know, little particles happening there and that's looking pretty good. So now to make it move. So to make it move, what we need to do is we need to go to the environment and what we're gonna do is we're gonna bump up the wind X. So we're gonna bring that up to about, let's say 500. And as soon as you've done that, you can see the particles are blowing in that direction. If you wanted it to move up or the other way, then you can always go and you can put in a negative value and then it will go to the left. Or if you want it to go up and down, you can also play around with the uh, wind Y settings as well. But I'll leave it to the right. The next thing that we need to do is we also need to go to the air turbulence and we'll uh, set the effect position to let's say 100. And now you're gonna have um, that cool kind of wavy look over there. So now what we need to do is we need to now animate. So I'm just gonna move to a roughly around about three seconds. I'm gonna move up to the emitter and I'm just gonna click on the particles per second. I'm gonna move to probably around about five seconds and then just change the particles per second back to zero. And so now if you've done that correctly, now you will see that we have all the particles coming in and then once you get to this point, the particles will then just fade out. So now to make it look even better, what we need to do is we need to duplicate that particle layer. So I'm gonna press Command D to duplicate it. And then while I'm here, I'm just gonna rename it particles two, just so we don't get confused. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, on that layer, press U to bring up the keyframes. And I'm just gonna move these keyframes 
This is starting from about three seconds to five seconds. So I'll probably go from about five seconds to about six seconds. And we're just gonna change up a few things in here. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to go to particle and we're just going to change the size. So we're gonna bring this size down a little bit. So to maybe two or even let's say one and a half and then what we are going to do is we are going to go back to the environment and we are going to change the wind x we're going to put it back down to zero and the effect position we're going to lower that to about let's say 20 and then what we are going to do is we are going to animate the wind x so i'm going to move forward in time to about six seconds i'm going to hit that uh, stopwatch for wind x and then I'm going to move forward another couple of seconds. So let's say something like eight. And I'm just gonna bring that up to maybe, let's say 800 or so. And so now just looking at the animation, you can see that it kind of starts a little bit late. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to bring it back a little bit in front of that five seconds. So as the particles whip in, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the whole thing fly off as well. So I think that that's looking pretty cool. What we can do with those two keyframes is we can always go to our animation and go to keyframe assistant and then just put easy ease on them. And if you wanna change some of these positions and things like that, for example, if you wanna move the end a little bit uh, quicker, something like that, you can. Um, but yeah, totally up to you. So now what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna press you to bring up my keyframes here and I'm just going to move and offset this to about two seconds until we have something like that. And so now we've kind of kept the animation um, keyframes in line and now you can see what's happening here. So now you've got two sets of animated particles and then it slowly starts to move and drift off. So I think that's looking pretty good. So I'm just gonna go back into the project window. I'm going to grab the image and I'm gonna put it in between the two particle layers. And the other thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm also going to import this mat. So I'm gonna go file import and this was just um, a stock footage clip that I found on a website called VidEasy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag that in. It doesn't really matter where it is. Just make sure that the scale is correct. Now, in my case, it's 1080, so it is correct. The next thing that we need to do is you can turn off the visibility for that mat. And then if we go to image and we go to toggle switches, we can now change that. So what we're gonna do is we are going to go to the track mat and we're gonna make sure that we click on that stock footage 0415. We're gonna click on the alpha mat and then we are also going to invert the mat. So now we have a luma mat selected with the inverted mat. And now you can see what's happening here and I think that's looking pretty cool but we actually want the opposite of that. So what we're gonna do is we are going to go to our stock footage layer. We are going to right click and then we are going to go to time and then time reverse layer. And so now we will have the reverse of that. And I think it starts pretty late. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna play around with it until we get it to where we want it to actually start. So maybe if we have it starting something like that. So now you can see the particles and the mat going off at the same time. So now that you've reversed your clip, you can make it longer and slower if you want by going into time, time stretch. But I think that's looking pretty good. The only other problem that we have here is that the image comes back over there. So what we wanna do is we just wanna go to our image layer, press T for opacity, all right? Hit the stopwatch and then move forward one frame. So I'll just move that back one and then put that to zero. And so now we will have that cool mat coming in. So now we need to dress it up and do the final touches here. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a new background, all right? And I'm just gonna drag it all the way to the end. Um, what we're gonna do is we are going to search for an effect called gradient ramp. Then I'm gonna go back to color hunt. 
and I'm gonna choose my dark blue over here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put it onto my end color over there. I'm gonna change it to a radial uh, ramp. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go swap colors and I'm just gonna get that point up there and I'm just gonna move that into the middle. And then the end of the ramp, I'm just gonna move it out just so it you know, gives that kind of vignette kind of look. And I think that's looking pretty good. So now that we have the background, the next and final thing that we can do is we can create a new adjustment layer. And I'm gonna search for an effect called noise. So I'm just gonna bump that up to about, let's say 8%, just make sure that that is on the top. And then the other final thing that we can do here is on our image layer, we can search for an effect called drop shadow and you can play around with how much drop shadow you want. I'm not gonna go too crazy there. So just maybe a little bit of um, distance there, maybe five or 10. And then the other final thing that you can do is you can add some glow. And my settings for glow would be somewhere around, you know, 80, 85 for the threshold, 40 for the radius and 0.5 for the intensity. And once you put all of that together, then you have yourself a nice reveal logo using uh, trap code particular. If the drop shadow is too dark, you can always go back to the opacity and change it. Maybe we'll change it to like, let's say 30 or even 20, you know, something like that. So cool, so that is a pretty short tutorial on how to create a logo reveal using trap code particular. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.